Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, just a few quick things. Get a little housekeeping out of the way. If you need to use the restroom, down the hall, all the way down to the left. You'll see it. Okay. Um, one bathroom. So, yeah. Um, we're gonna do a few things. Um, and then we're gonna head outside. And we'll, after we're finished doing a few small things, then we will head outside to do the ribbon cutting. After that, you will have a chance to um, look at what the Lord has blessed us with. But we do appreciate you being here with us today. Uh, my name is Bishop Andy Roberts. I'm a senior pastor here of the Tabernacle, and we are welcome to have you. Um, so we're just going to do a little preliminary things, and then at 6 o'clock we'll begin our dedication service. Um, at this time, we're going to welcome... Uh, Elder Moses White, and he is going to lead us in prayer for our dedication. Amen. 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 <clears throat> From Toledo, Ohio, my home church. So. I'd just like to say praise the Lord again. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord to everybody. Hallelujah. We'll greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are just so happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing. Yes, yes. Just bow your head. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, and God, we come for no other reason than give you honor and the glory. Because God, you've been so good to us. Yes. You opened yes. doors for us. You made ways out of no way. Yes. And God, Hallelujah. we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for just being in the service one more time. And Lord God, we ask you to bless your people, Lord, who are called by your name. Yes, Lord. Lord, we realize without you, God, we can do nothing. But you said with you, Lord, we can do all things. And Lord, we thank you today for the service, just being in the service. Lord, we ask you to bless today, Lord. Bless each and every speaker. Yes. Bless each and every one that walks through the door. Yes, and Lord. Yes, Lord. We continue to bless Bishop and, 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 and Bishop Andy. We'll continue to keep your loving arms around. Whatever their needs are, Lord, we put it in your hand. We believe that you're going to meet every need. Yes, we yes. Thank you for Hallelujah. it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. 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 Now we're going to have our first lady, pastor's wife, um, evangelist, Tara Alt, come and lead us in a chorus. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'll start out with it, and then you can catch on to it. All right. What happened to our musicians? <laughs> oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise you, the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise Church of God of the Apostolic Faith. As many of you already know, we have decided to relocate our national headquarters to Greenville, Ohio, from Fremont, Ohio. After 10 years in Fremont, the Holy Ghost made it very clear for us to get out of the city of Fremont. So we have done as we were required of the Holy Ghost. The city became a very liability and cesspool on daily attacks of the church of the living God. 
The Church of God of the Apostolic Faith has officially set up our new headquarters here in Greenville, Ohio. And we would like to take a moment just to thank Brother Richard, who graciously went out throughout the community and helped us find this wonderful facility. So Brother Richard is the guy in the blue with the glasses there. So we want to honor him tonight because it is because of him and his dedication that we are in this facility tonight. Richard is a good friend of ours. So we have decided to move our headquarters to Greenville, Ohio. It's just a little bit from Dayton, Ohio. And we are excited about this new move. We, the General Assembly and Board of Directors, feels that this is the best move for our church family. With that, we are here to have church and to have our church dedication and ribbon cutting. As part of the transition, in the next few weeks, I will be listing new leaders who will become part of this mission. Many directors will be rezoned as well as districts. There will be new bishops placed in leadership in the next few weeks and months to come. I hate to say this and to take the moment, but let me be very clear that we have taken on mayors, we have taken on city councils, lawyers, judges, and we have taken on Congress and police force, commissioners, federal government, and many others to, to address injustice and racial issues. And I, as the Archbishop, have no problem calling out sin, calling out corruption, calling out inequality, inequality, racial justice, prison injustice, abortion, educational system, and health issues, such as we saw with COVID-19 with the shutting down of our churches. Let me be very clear to the Greenville Township. We moved here and we do not want a war. But we will never shut our doors down. Hallelujah. Never. Hallelujah. Our doors will be open. I don't care what pandemic comes or goes. The Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as the manner of some have. Therefore, we will never shut our doors down. You do not dictate to us. You do not dictate to us what we can or cannot do in the house of God. The gate of hell will never prevail against the church of the living God. We have fought for these cases that I have mentioned and we will fight for many other issues. I am not only very vocal on that, but I am very vocal on the biblical issues of our day and time. Do your homework and you will find out that Bishop Bowling is a very bold and very unapologetic when it comes to the Bible and as well as the political arena. I am a spiritual father and my job is to lead our church and to lead the community into a betterment of the teachings of Christ. Our goal here at the General Assembly in the office of the bishop is, to, is simple. It is to serve the poor, the suffering, to feed the homeless and the hungry, to shelter the homeless, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick, to visit the imprisonment, to give drink to those that are thirsty, and to bury the dead. Our mission is to reach out to the oppressed, the downtrodden, the rejected, the unprivileged, the depressed, the lonely, and those that are imprisonment, hospitalization, and institution, sick and shut in. And depart into them life, hope, healing, deliverance, and comfort. We are here to empower ministries, to equip, to train believers to maximize their fullness and their, and their full potentials to advance the kingdom of God in this generation. We are committed to serving God and the needs of your family. We believe and teach in the spirit of unity. Hear me, and I want you to hear me very carefully. All over Facebook, all over YouTube, all over the city of Greenville. I'm tired of the church denominational barriers. There are many members, but yet one body. 
No division will you find in this ministry. No social, racial, faith, or generational barriers. We exist to provide credibility training, equipping, and the benefiting the kingdom workers to enable and to enhance the local church and its leaders to fulfill their mandates to make disciples of men and women. The church is a place of service. It is a place where we serve one another. We serve our community. We are not a place for spectators at the Church of God of the Apostolic Faith. The Church of God is dedicated to the preaching and the practicing of biblical Christianity. We, the congregation, strive to the Bible base center and holding the pattern of the New Testament church as required of 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, Colossians 1 and 18, Philippians 3 and 17. And if you're looking for an apostolic church that does not use gimmicks to attract people, then we welcome you to our house. And we want to welcome you with a great warm welcome. With that, I want to go over a few of ministries real quick that will be coming out of this house. Uh, the name of the local church will be changed officially tonight to the Tabernacle. The Church of God headquarters will still run out of here, but because we do have another Church of God up on 36, we have some other things. We decided that it is best that we go with the name the Tabernacle. Tonight in our service, we will uh, take Bishop Roberts and we will lay hands on him and place him in as the senior pastor. On the front lines defending American freedoms, the Good Samaritan trans Medical Transportation, the Master's Table, Isacar Tours, CIA, Christians in Action, the Lord's Storehouse Ministry, Food Bank, the Church of God College of Apostolic Bishops, Acts, Apostolics Coming Together Services, Fishers of Men Outreach and Discipleship Training. We also have in the back room back there a 24-hour, seven-day uh, prayer line where you can call somebody and they will counsel with you and pray with you uh, no matter what time of day or night it is. We have showers of blessings. We have now have a shower put in here for the homeless so that they can take showers. Uh, we are going to open up the church in every aspect that we can. I am sick and tired of churches and people overlooking our homeless, overlooking those that has issues, drugs, or whatever. It is over. And I've come to town to tell you the party is over. We're going to do it the way that Christ meant for it to be. And that is to go ye therefore and make disciples. Yeah. To love people. Where they're at. Where they're at. One pastor did not like it because some of the people that he said isn't going to be uh, up to apostolic code. And you apostolics know what I'm talking about. But it's like I told them. I don't care what you think. The Bible says that we are many members, but yet one body. Right. And until you train and, and equip people, you can't expect for them to be what we have been. And we've been in it for 40 years. Yeah. Another ministry that we have is the Church of God landscaping, where we are going to go out and minister to our elderly. Those that don't have uh, the proper uh, tools to cut their yard and, and take care of their landscape, we're going to take care of it for them. Project Hope, a Christmas program that we buy gifts for the kids and we, we have dinner, wired, uh, walking in recovery every day. So this is just some of the ministries and also we don't have a senior citizens building here in our town. So we have opened up the back. Uh, it's going to be on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays for the elderly to come and just have coffee, play board games and sit and fellowship one with another. So that's what the church is about. And that is what we are about. We are a hands-on ministry. Everything that you give 
into the body of Christ is not going to go for my or Bishop Roberts income because we don't accept income we believe in freely give freely received it goes into these ministries right here and back into our community so we want to make sure that everyone knows who and what we are and what we have come uh, to town to do the Holy Ghost spoke to us in this this is my last statement the Holy Ghost spoke to us and said, Get thee up out of this land and go to the land that I shall send thee. He said, And there shall I put my name, and I will declare it among the city. And God has led us right here to the beautiful city of Greenville. And we have visited every church in this county. We have visited every organization pretty much that there is. And we have had a friendly, lovely welcome for the most part. And we are so gracious to be in the house of the Lord and to have this wonderful building and now after tonight it is time to dig in and get busy and evangelize our community and bring the spirit of unity at this time Bishop Roberts is going to come and introduce to you the flag and what it stands for now to my left yeah, my left, you're right, I believe. Um, our pastor has never even seen our church flag. And this is only a replicant of what we want. We will want. We'll get something better here. But this is what the Lord has blessed us with. This is the banner of truth. Psalms 16.4 says, Thou hast given the banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. See, let me say it again. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Since early times, people have displayed flags and various other objects to show their nationality, their allegiances, their loyalty and devotion. A flag is a piece of cloth or a bunting, often attached to a staff, which defines colors, patterns, symbolic devices, used as a national or state symbol, or to indicate membership in the organization to signal a banner, a standard, or an ensign. The term standard carries a dual definition. Biblically, it is a, foremost a flag representing a specific people or nation. However, secondly, it signifies a set of principles. Isaiah spoke of lifting up the standard for the people, which is in context of the banner of truth. It signifies the church flag, the church's doctrine, the standard of the truth. Ensign is used with several meanings, and in the proper context means a banner. Banner is always used in the context of a flag. Truth is forever associated with God. One of God's given names is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner, making the church of God flag truly the banner of truth. Yes. Each of the colors and, and symbols displayed on the flag are significant. Real quick, the red symbolizes the blood that Jesus shed for our sins on Calvary. The white symbolizes the purity of Jesus and the purity of our heart once we experience his saving grace. And Jesus said that I shall have a church without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. The blue symbolizes the truth of his word. The purple symbolizes royalty. The scepter stands for the author, the authority of God. The star represents the symbol that led the shepherds to the birthplace of Christ. The crown represents the king of kings, Jesus Christ. The red stripes do not touch at the top and the bottom of the flag. This represents the fact that, that all have not heard God's word and have not gathered together as part of the bride of Christ. The stripes, which form a square which, with openings at the top and the bottom, represent the fold, the church, which is the pillar and the ground of truth. So in conclusion, we proudly wave and display the banner, not with vain pride, but with worshipful attitude to be privileged to represent the one who died for us and for our salvation. And our church flag pledge is our pledge allegiance to our flag, to our church flag, and to the doctrine for which it stands. One God, one faith, one mind, and one church for all. Amen. And real quick, Archbishop's going to come and tell you about a marker we're going to have very soon. All right, we have sent off for the marker. They have not gotten it back to us, so we did a replica. Uh, this is what is going to be on it. Bishop, up here. The bishop's in the house. Amen. 
So what we have done is we, we did a replica because we wanted this to be a part of the service tonight. And this is the last thing before we dismiss. But um, what we had done is we were going to put this on a um, monument plaque. And it is going to set out in front of the building. And so at this time, we're going to unveil this. Bishop Roberts, if you'll grab that side. And this will be a stone tablet stone out tablet. there to represent the general headquarters of the Church of God of the Apostolic Faith. Bishop, go ahead and read that for me. Uh, General Assembly of the Church of uh, General Assembly, one central seat of government, theocratic government. The General Headquarters building contains the office of the bishop, Archbishop Lee Bowling. Uh, the staff of the Church of God of the Apostolic Faith National International Ministerial Association, Incorporated. The body of Christ is directed throughout the world in the same manner that the early church efforts were overseen and directed from Jerusalem. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Christ is at Isaiah 2 and 3. Ephesians 5 and 23, Christ is the head of the church. Ephesians 4 and 4, there is but one body. Um, and then it has a few other scriptures. So we are very thankful for what God is doing here in Greenville, Ohio. So at this time,